So it's clear in a million, but it's certainly not time to let your guard down on proper pattern procedures. Maybe this next scenario has happened to you. Let's take a look. November 163, Mike, the center maintain 2000. Enter a right downwind for runway five. Report to your airport and site. Okay, down to 2000 and uh, enter a right downwind for runway five. 163, Mike. And report to airport and site. Thousand go. Still can see the airport. November one six three Mike, see your airspeed. Uh, one sixty Mike is a uh, two twenty five. Not crap. One six three Mike, Roger. Yeah, that's not gonna be good. No one wants to get a message to call ATC or be alerted that there's someone from the FAA waiting to talk to them after they shut their aircraft down. Let's look at proper pattern procedures. Violating speed restrictions is a common reason for pilot deviations in turbine aircraft. FAR 91-117 says very clearly a pilot cannot operate above 200 knots indicated airspeed when at or below 2,500 feet AGL within four nautical miles of the primary airport of a class C or D airspace area. So approaching Naples, Arnie needed to have slowed to 200 before he descended below 2,500 feet. Remember that we're all now flying with ADSB out, which transmits indicated airspeed, not just ground speed. So ATC knows exactly what your indicated airspeed is at all times if they want to. Besides airspeed violations, incorrect pattern entries are responsible for many pilot deviations. Let's look at another situation you could find yourself in. Okay, where's that airport? Can't wait to get there. Hang with my friends. And why do they call this place Bar Harbor? Huh. Oh well. Bar Harbor traffic citation 163 Mike, 2,000 feet, about eight south of the airport. Be right down when runway 22, full stop. Get the gear down, start our right base. Power coming back. Full flaps coming. And here we go. All right, well, that was a better, one of my better landings. Easy to do in this plane, I hope. And I hope the FBO's got my rental car, and I hope they got the hangar space, because I didn't get confirmation of that. And uh, Modern Aviation, this is 163 Mike. Uh, we're supposed to have a rental car there and some hangar space today. We'll be here three days. Uh, is everything ready to go? Number 163 Mike, Roger, taxi to parking ahead of our hangar. As you egress the aircraft, it's not an FAA person would like to meet you at your airplane. Oh, wow. All right, when I get out of the aircraft, I'll talk to the FAA guy. Thank you, 163 Mike. I wonder what he wants. It was a pretty, pretty much a perfect flight. I liked it. Nice weather. Huh, I'll think about that one. The FARs are very clear. When approaching an airport without an operating control tower, the pilot is required to make all turns to the left in the traffic pattern unless right traffic is clearly indicated for that airport. The best way to know if right traffic is indicated is in the chart supplement. Here's an example for nearby Brunswick Executive Airport, which indicates right traffic for runway one left and right. But again, if there is no indication of right traffic, 
left traffic is required. A pilot approaching Bar Harbor from the southwest when the landing runway is 2-2 would have a natural tendency to just join the right downwind. But this is again not allowed by the FAR and is a very common violation when the airport is busy during the summer. So let's look at how Arne should have entered the left pattern for runway 22. Once the runway and use and proper traffic pattern direction have been determined, the pilot should proceed to a point well clear of the pattern before descending and entering the pattern at pattern altitude. A pilot should never descend to pattern altitude in the traffic pattern. This is to allow for sufficient time to view the entire traffic pattern before entering the pattern. The FAA recommends one of two entries be used. The preferred entry is to cross over the midfield and join the downwind at a 45 degree angle giving you good visibility of traffic on downwind. The alternate of a midfield entry is permitted only when the pattern is not congested. And finally, don't forget that turbine aircraft are required to maintain no lower than 1,500 feet above the airport until necessary to descend for landing. We're going to fly a proper pattern entry this time. I'm maintaining an altitude 500 feet above the traffic pattern, and I'm flying across the airport at midfield. This keeps me well above any airplanes in the traffic pattern and giving me good visibility to see what's happening on the downwind. I'm going to fly out past the traffic pattern area, descend to pattern altitude so that I'm down at pattern altitude before I join that left downwind. So we've just overflown the airport at an altitude 500 feet above the traffic pattern altitude. This keeps us well clear of any traffic in the pattern while also giving us a good visual picture of the downwind. And we're now flying away from the airport we're not going to descend down to our traffic pattern altitude until we are well outside the pattern. By the time we enter the downwind, we should be level at the pattern altitude and we want to join at about a 45. So at this point, I can see I'm about two to three miles away from the airport. It's directly behind us. We're flying away. So this is a, a, a good time where I can make my descent down to pattern and I can make my turn around so here we are at the proper turbine pattern altitude we're entering the downwind at a 45 degree. I have a great visual picture of who's in the pattern. So as I turn on to my downwind, there should be no surprises. Remembering at an airport without an operating control tower, there are often are aircraft without radios in the pattern. So relying on the Unicom or CTAF frequency to understand the picture is not always sufficient.